So do you think that we're in just like a constant information war now, like in our day to day lives, just all the time? Is that like, are we, are we just kind of, I don't know, are we just constantly sitting as sort of individuals, like in a crossfire between 20, 30 different groups, all trying to um, put their narrative out there? Is, is that like the reality of our modern world now? Uh, well, Josh, it depends. It depends where you are living. In my viewpoint, the people living in liberal democracies, for them, economy is more important. A person living in Africa, he's more concerned about his job, his loaf and bread. A person living in Pakistan, where I belong to, there are many people, they are more concerned about their ideology. The ideology should reach out to as many as possible. You said, are we in a constant? In that case, a person living in democracies or liberal democracies, they are just busy with their daily routines, whereas on the other side, where there are some deprivations as well, poor governance, least regulations by the government on internet, etc. Such people, yes, they are in constant information warfare because they are facing challenges. They are trying to spread their message. And I, I, let me tell you honestly, I receive sometimes messages, anonymous messages on my phone, and I don't like them. I block them. So this is how the, the message is unwanted messages they are reaching out to the millions millions of people and that is how i can say we are kind of in a constant information war which is not so intensified yet but it may intensify where people of different school of thoughts are living together they have different ideologies and ideologies are clashing with each other and you know that two countries they are friendly with pakistan iran from it has shia uh, government Saudi Arabia, it has the Obandi government. So this kind of even the people who are affiliated with these governments, their ideologies, they are so much into it that even I would like to cite you one more example. The people, the veterans who served in Iraq during this two, after 2003 invasion of United States, they came here to clear these, uh, Iraq from weapons of mass destruction and removing Saddam Hussein. And after serving five years, the man, the man goes back to states and says, I have learned nothing about Iraq, but it is deeply divided into different factions. And the major faction is Sunni and Shia, and the fight is going on for nothing. So this kind of things, this kind of domains, maybe a person living in UK, a person living in America, it's not so important for the people living here. It's a matter of life and death for them. And you can imagine how much effort they're putting for it. And I would like to add one more thing, Josh, funding, funding for such things. You know, if I go outside and I ask um, someone, this is my project, I really want to work for humanity, I won't find any person who can fund it. It will be very hard for me, even an entrepreneur, any businessman, or any religious clergyman, they won't support me. If a person goes outside and says, this is my religious ideology, this is my ethnic ideology, this is my subnational ideology, you will find hundreds of people standing behind you, okay, I'm willing to fund you. This is irony this is i i don't understand how is it happening so this is the power of funding the people fund you and the motto continues what they want to spread it continues and they are not even um, they're scattered all around uh, from south africa to russia from pakistan to united states canada to argentina they all are scattered but they are well connected thanks for making it all the way to the end of the podcast don't forget our sponsor, ExpressVPN, and my book, Brexit, The Establishment Civil War, can both be found in the links in the description below. And also, please like, share, and subscribe to this podcast. It's the best way to help us grow. Until next time, thanks for listening. Screw the hedge funds. You can make as many rules as you want, but if there's no teeth behind them, what's the point? Well, like Citadel is potentially just gone in a few months. It feels like financial institutions, that they are all laughing at us by buying GME. <laughs> Screw the hedge funds. Like I will lose my entire investment if it brings them down. Why on earth last May could you buy the entire company for $200 million? What's been happening on Reddit and in social media and in the marketplace? has never been seen before. I argue that nothing is off the table. There is nothing off the table when dealing with the volumes of money and something as 
big as the United States uh, stock market. The hedge funds have clearly underestimated a group of a group of people raised on Friday night World of Warcraft rates. Dark pools, they are they're another uh, mechanism to manipulate and cheat. Mainstream journalists don't say these things for a number of reasons. Uh, one is their sources are the people that I'm talking about, and so they can't call somebody a crook. Super Stonk and the other communities that have emerged are a hive mind, the likes of which we have never seen before. It's madness and brilliance, insanity and genius all rolled into one. It's very possible that Citadel will be gone in a few months. And, and not just Citadel, but the entire financial system has the potential to come crashing down. These crooks continue to gamble recklessly with the world economy and this could be the moment that they finally get their justice.